More than one million is set to be spent on rectifying water ingress issues at three high-rise council housing blocks in Barnsley. Albion House, Britannia House and Buckley House will receive work due to tenants' complaints. A report due to be discussed by Barnsley's ruling cabinet, council cabinet on Wednesday reveals 1.15 yeah 1.15 million is required each high rise block has a seven story layout comprising comprising of 56 homes and if approved as expected a tendering process will be entered a report a report said Maintenance surveyors, so remember that, maintenance surveyors investigated, so this is a key point. Maintenance surveyors investigated these issues and deemed the source of the source of the water ingress to be from the external elevation during periods of wet weather that was tracking through the cavity and exposing itself on internal plaster as damp patches so I read I was reading Chronicle and I read that and I was kind of fuming so uh, and reason why I was fuming um, is because one there's 1.15 million pound going to be spent um, tackling these three high-rise buildings which are just off Sheffield Road in Barnes if anybody knows it and um, these these properties, I think they were built in the sort of late fifties, sixties, um, and over the years, I've I've seen that they've had loads and loads of work on them, absolutely tons of work on them, and uh, and and these are all by council, so they've, they've had to be upgraded and upgraded as building regs um, get upgraded themselves. Um, this is through insulation, water, heating, and and things like that. Um, but my main concern is that um, it's maintenance surveyors that's done this report. They're not um, qualified damp surveyors, and I don't think they're qualified in ventilation either. I think, uh, and, and, and I'm just surmising that um, these people have gone in and they've seen these patches on the wall and they're just assuming that it's um, water ingress from, um, from inclement weather. Now... These are cavity. These are cavity walls, and I think they've got cavity insulation in them as well. And for water to, um, for rainwater to to be that severe that it's it's rained on, onto outside skin, and then it's tracked across cavity. How it's going to track across cavity can only be if this um, if the the cavity wall insulation gets wet, uh, and if it's the older type that that can hold moisture um, so if it's if it's tracked across there then you know it I, I don't know it just in my head it just it just it just can't do that especially on three buildings that are all identical um, and I think I've mentioned it before that older buildings with solid walls were built so that when rain and inclement weather affected outside a building in sort of winter or in um, torrential rain rainfall in, in summer or, or, or things like that, then what happens is that the, the amount of water mo and moisture will, will soak into the brickwork so far. And then when the weather changes, when, you know, when weather gets better, then the um, the moisture that's gone into the the building will evaporate back out of uh, back out of the, the the masonry, and these are this is how they were designed over like hundred years ago, and it's a simple process. But as building practices got better, the the found that if the if they created a cavity, then the moisture is not going to um, get through to the inner skin. What tended to happen is if you got uh, wall ties, you could get um, moisture forming on that and it could run across. And then this is why they designed a wall tie that sort of 
um, that had a, a, a dip in it so that if water did track across it, it'd go into dip and it'd drip down, it'd drip down into a cavity. Um, so it were all designed so that the water could not get in, onto in the skin. So then they, they got this cavity wall insulation. Now, I don't know whether these flats have had it. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that they probably have. Whether it's that type that's um, old, um, it's like a white cotton woolly type of insulation. And if that gets wet, then it, again it can cause issues on inside but for water to get through the brick and uh, and and the mortar point it's a track through there and then sort of go, go across this cotton wool type insulation and then go through the second skin and then through plaster to cause patches on inside I think if you if you were a, if if you caught fire brigade out and they got an hose and they stood there for a couple of days, it might get on, on inside. It's just in my damp surveying uh, brain, I I just can't see how it's going to work. And then identically on three different tower blocks, I I it just it just didn't go in through my brain. What I do think is that. These are, were built in fifties, uh, late fifties, early sixties, or whatever. Concrete frame buildings, um, notoriously bad with uh, insulation, ventilation, filled with tenants. The uh, and 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 again, I don't know where these issues uh, have been have shown up. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that they're gonna be on top floor because moisture. Um, when it when it when it affects a property, moisture in the air, so water vapor will rise up and sort of keep getting added to. So you get more moisture in the next flat, and then more moisture in the next flat till it reaches top. Cause it, warm air rises, and then your top flats tend to be to be worse affected. So what I'm thinking is. I think I could save Barnsley Council around about a million pound. Imagine that one person saving them a million pound. Um, so I've, I did an interview yesterday with um, with a councillor. So Paddy Shirt is a, is a councillor for uh, Barnsley. So I did interview him. This, this might have already gone out before um, before we get the answers. But I've asked him to uh, if if he can find out a bit more about this report. And if I can get a copy to have a read, um, and this is our happening on Wednesday, so I think if he can, if he can sort of have a word tomorrow about this this report, then um, we might be able to go in and uh, and do some proper testing. So PCA, I've um, I've been working with. Uh, I'm just trying to think which university it is. It's, we, they've been working with one at universities, and they've um, they've come up with a like a, a I, I want to say it's like a um, a piece of software that works with data loggers. Now, data loggers have always been well; they've been used for quite a few years um, with PCA members and um, surveyors, and this is for if there's problem properties. So if 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 surveyors go in, damp surveyors, and due to the experience, they say one thing, and then the um, maintenance surveyors or customers are still saying that they're getting penetrating damp, then what used to happen is you, you took data loggers in, so you put two in the property, and you there's one that's based outside that's uh, that takes data from you know, an external base. And then these three, the data from all three um, data loggers gets collated and you can come up with loads of different uh, things. So you'll be able to tell what's happening all through day. You know, you'll be able to pinpoint um, times of high humidity and then you can look at times and say, well, this is when they got in from work. This is when they were washing this, so you can get all this information, and then you can come up with. It. But what PCA has done is they've they've um, they've come up with this software that um, 
collates everything and it it builds a report and it'll tell you um why they're getting down what um you know what's causing it and they'll tell you what schema repair need needs to be done and i've i've spoke to um councillor shirt paddy I've, i spoke to him about it um and i explained it to him and i've sent him some literature showing him you know um extracts from from pca um and and it explains about this system so if we can go in before this money is um before before it's like the the the, the okay to spend 1.15 million pound <coughs> on scaffolding out these flats um i think that in, it, it, just just reading that I, I i just think it's it's going to be a, a ventilation and insulation issue so i think that you know we we could probably save him some money cuz we can recommend some better uh, fans. I'm tipping that they've probably only got fans that's on timers. If they have got them, they, they probably have got them, but they're probably on timers. Um, probably never get used. So it'd be interesting for us to go in and and, and do a, you know, a proper survey, and uh, and have a look at it. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. But you know what? What have they got to lose? One point one five million pound. That's what they've got to you to lose. Um, just by hanging on a bit and just having a, you know, getting some experts in and and, and having a look at it, and uh, and I'm not the you know biggest expert in in the PCA. There's there's boffins that's uh, that's a lot better than me, uh, but you know I'd like to go in and and have a look on in a first instance and just see if you know if it is what the, what they're saying it is, which I don't think it is. I, it just don't it just don't collate in my head that whether it's rained that bad that weather on inside you know this this rainwater has got straight through onto inside because I've, I've seen how much work's gone into them flats and i've seen they've done roof they've done everything um there's everything apart from get an expert in damp to have a look at it and and this is this is part of issue so um so you never know one person might save council one one point one five million pound. Whether that's a big deal to council, I don't know. I don't know. But I know they've already sent tenders out for uh, scaffold because one of the lads um, that I know, um, Nicky Nicky Cooper, he's got a scaffolding company and they've asked him to um, to tender for it already. So um, so I think they think that it's going to be that it's going to go through. So it's going to be I think one of them. Let's wait and see uh, and see what uh, what comes up with. I actually know somebody that's got a flat there. Um, whether he's still there, Noel who used to uh, he used to come and watch. Uh, it's Leon's dad, um, and he's got like a Polish name, somewhat after Auschwitz or something. But um, he he had a flat there, and I I I went in one day. He asked me to come and look at something. Um, it was either that or he was paying me. No, he was paying me. I did some work at his his house and he moved into Alb Albion House. So, worst comes to worst, I can sort of try and get contact with, with him and uh, and see if I can go up uh, and have a look at his flat and just uh, and just gauge opinion, just see what he what he thinks, um, and 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 ask him, you know, if anybody has been in and what what they've been asked, you know, what questions have they asked him. Um, how long were they in flat? What were they looking at? That that type of thing. So um, it is a it is a a small place, Barnsley, and uh, we might be able to get to know stuff if council knocks them back, and when they come and do work, um, I might even be able to sort of you know find out what what they're proposing to do, because um, I I don't understand what they're going to do. I, I, from from memory. I think it's brick on outside and it's pointed brick. Are they going to scaffold it? Are they going to repoint it? Are they going to put storm dry on it? I mean, for me, that that that'd be an, an, another easy fix. Um, if it is penetrating damp that's coming in, why don't we just put storm dry on it? So rain will just hit it and then bead up and, and run off. And I'm sure. <clears throat> let me let me just do a few calculations. So, 
I think scaffolding is going to be the biggest uh, cost because, and 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 I think this could this could be done. We are probably we are scaffolding. You could do it in cradles. Um, you could. There's a company I've seen. I mean, they're from Sheffield. There's a company, um, and they do uh, repairs to buildings, and they go all over the world. And I'm sure they're based in Sheffield. Um, and what they do is this. It might be Manchester. Might be, they might be in Manchester. They're not far away. Um, they abseil down um, off, off a top of building. They'll abseil down it and they'll do repairs um, using all climbing equipment. And I think what, what they could do is they could storm dry all that just just by abseiling over. So so you take away your scaffolding costs straight away. Sorry, Nicky. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I know I might be doing you out of the job, but I think it's probably already been uh, given to somebody this uh, this contract. So even though they sent a tender out to you, I won't be holding my breath. Even though he's a brilliant um, scaffolder, it's a brilliant company, but the, these things tend to have already been given to, uh, you know, to people they've used before. And uh, by law, they have to put tenders out. So uh, this is just how it works. But I think, you know, contact this company that do abseiling, get these guys with Potter Storm Dry, get them over edge. It's easy to apply. And um, that could be done in... I bet, I bet they could do it in a week. They could have two people on each, on each tower. In fact, they'd probably do it in a day. <laughs> no, not a day. Three days. One person on each tower. Abseil over edge. Storm dry it. Any rain comes then, beads up and runs off. This is if it is penetrating damp, which I don't think it is. I think they've. I think they've got it completely wrong. I think they've wasted the money using maintenance surveyors to survey a, a damp issue. It should be experts that's doing it. Um, and I'm like I said, I'm not putting myself forward as being best expert, um, but they can contact PCA and they can get they can get brainiest person from PCA to come up. I'll I'll want to be on site as well because uh, I'm just I'm just curious I'm just curious uh, uh, what what's happened and and this process and uh, how it's gone through, um, and it won't be the first time that a council's been wrong. Um, and I, you know you see it all the time, and it's not just councils. It's it, you know most people, they'll not get the right person to do work that's that's needed. They'll not. Um, it's not. It's it's probably that they don't know. They should know because you know the, it's a massive. It's a massive council. They spend. They they're, they're in control and big budgets. So you'd think that they'd be able to allocate this correctly, but um, you, they've. They've, they've made mistakes with the med mistakes. Yeah, so there's a catalogue of errors with Barnsley Council. So um, I just, one of the things what's civic, so and this was to do with surveys as well. So they they, they got this wrong on on surveys as well. What happened was um, they. Uh, in fact, what I had to do is I had to I had to send this video to uh, Barnsley Chronicle dinner because they'll pick up they they'd probably pick up the mantle. Um, so these guys, I might I might email them later on. And they might be able to go to a meeting and, and, and say something. But um so Civic, Barnsley Civic, beautiful old building. Um it used to um used to have concerts there, uh, it was a theatre. We we I've I've been to when I was little, been to pantomimes there and it's it's just a lovely, lovely old old theatre. And uh, Barnsley Council shut it down, uh, took it over and decided to turn it into a um a better building. So they had these surveys done and it was going to cost X amount to do and they budgeted for that. They started work and then realised there were no foundations. And then they had this massive argument with um, with people that had done survey <coughs> why they've missed this uh, this thing. But it turned, they, they spent, and then they spent a load of money on court cases and still didn't get no. So it, it would... Just a catalogue of errors, and it went over budget and over budget and over budget. They got a, a lovely building, and they put a big extension up back, and it's and it's it, it's great for going watching stuff. But older part, which is front, is never used, and they've got they've 
the, the, they had some uh, old Victorian shops. It looks lovely. Um, but they don't use it. They don't use front. There's plans to use it, and this is, this is when they get this um, grant, which is two million and summer. They're gonna they're gonna do all up Eldon Street. So hopefully, they'll give grants to these charity shops. I mean, they, they knocked a pub down on Corner, which was um, well, it, it it were an old pub called Devonshire, and it had been turned into a chippy. And when you come out at train station, first thing you see well, this uh, scruffy chippy building so they knocked that down bought it knocked it down i think they paid about two two and eight hundred grand it might be 300 grand knocked it down so it's so when you come out at train station now it's a bigger space but when you look straight for it college have got um royal bottom at royal so that's not in use um it looks it looks a nice building but it's not in use so you come out there's a scabby shop straight straight across with like a 1970s um, front that looks looks rubbish. You've got a couple of takeaways with awful fronts. So for me, they need grants and they they need they need it putting back to like an old Victorian front or a modern front, like you know, a nice black thing. But give them grants to get that sorted out. A bit further on, you've got Odeon Cinema. Audience Cinema, well, it's Parkway. So they can give them a grant, get that sort of med back to its, uh, its I think it's 1920 or 1930s, so it's like an art deco front, so get that all done back up nice. Uh, and then you've got your Civic, so let these two shops either side, I think they've got four shops, so there's two either side at main front entrance, which, which are not used. So they should be back as um, either closed shops or independent shops, get them back up and running. Um, and then across road, which is, you've got like a nice arcade, but it's a, it's a Victorian arcade. You just go down into a bus station, but they're like cafes and things like that. But these all need grants to, to do that. Whether they're going to give grants to them or whether they're just going to spend it on road and paving, which I probably think that they're going to do it. Um, but for me, all them shops need, all fronts need doing up. And then when people come out at the train station, it all looks nice. Um, they made a great, to to be fair, they made a great job at town centre. They made a great job around town hall. It looks fantastic. Um, and everybody that you, you speak to from Barnsley are really proud of it. But I can save a million pound, I think. So that's going to be my, I'm going to keep everybody updated on this as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to update you what, what happens so I think first thing I'm going to do now, once I've finished this um, podcast, I'm going to email Chronicle and just uh, tell them what my thoughts are and just see what see what I have to say. I mean, they might come out and, and interview me, so uh, yeah, you never know, you never know. <laughs>